Now, joining us live via telephone is the CEO and publisher of Ovation International uh, Magazine, Dele Momodu. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Africa. And good to see, good to hear you this morning. Uh, very quickly, you are one of those that have put out a tweet, you know, to condole with the nation and the passing of Abba Kiari. How do you react to that news of his passing? Uh, it was such a shocking news uh, to me, just like uh, most Nigerians. I was just rounding off the, the uh, writing of my column for this day newspaper when the news broke. So I had to include it in what I was writing. Uh, what I would like to say is that Nigeria has lost a great man, mm. uh, an extremely brilliant man, uh, well educated. Uh, Mr. Abba Kiari uh, attended the University of Warwick, where he read sociology. Uh, he had read law from Cambridge. So you can imagine um, the kind of impeccable education background he had. So, but of course, there will always be controversies in, in every death. There are people who would say, oh, he should have done this, should have done that. But my attitude is that he came, he saw, and he has departed, like all of us must, one day or the other. So we can only wish him uh, a restful journey and that Allah will receive his soul. Hmm. Um, and then there are lessons, you would say, uh, for, for us as a nation to learn from the passing of Abba Kiari, you know, regarding leadership, regarding COVID-19, and all of that. Uh, well, uh, it's not just when a big man dies that we should learn. We should learn every day. We all go to our mosques. We all go to our churches. We listen to sermons, sometimes very, very powerful sermons. But as soon as we leave, we brush off everything that we were told. So living a good life, running a good government, should be a daily affair. We don't have to preach to people about that. Because leadership is about managing people and resources. It is not about politics. And uh, when God gives us power, we should remember every day that the man who gave it can take it at any time. Mm -hmm. So the lesson for me, yes, uh, Mr. Abakari was uh, embroiled in all kinds of controversies. I remember his brush with the former head of service, uh, his brush with the National Security Advisor. I don't know how that has ended, but I know that suddenly we don't hear much about the NSA. And uh, so, and uh, the Vice President of Nigeria was virtually relegated, and the President himself personally announced that his cabinet should enforce reports only to Mr. Abakiari. So a lot of people described him as the de facto president and vice president combined. In most pictures of the president, Mr. Abakari was always next to the president. They were very, very close. But I'm sure he relied on his expertise. He relied on his fertile brain. He was a very brilliant man. So there must be something he found in him that endeared him to Mr. President. Mm -hmm. So, but he has done his part. He has served his country well and served his president loyally. And I can only say, may he so rest in peace. All right, um, still on uh, Abba Kiari's death, uh, and then of course COVID-19, do you think we are doing an, enough as a nation in tackling uh, this pandemic that is with us? I, I, I don't think so, because you must remember 
that our healthcare system was in complete tatters. So there is not much you can do in the state of emergency such as the one we have right now. So that is why a lot of us are taking to prayers that you don't fall sick at this time. Because if you don't have the wherewithal to take care of yourself, uh, you may end up in one dungeon. Uh, but mercifully, Nigerians are very, very brilliant people. So they are rising up to the occasions. Uh, some of the governors have been able to do something. Uh, they declared a state of emergency. Lagos State, for example, everybody is commending what has happened in Lagos State, and everybody is commending the efforts of members of the private sector who have released money. Some have released their time to making sure that we survive this evil scourge. All right, I'll ask you to please stay on the line because we have joining us live via Skype also is a retired uh, Vice Marshal Femi uh, Gbadebo. Good morning, Mr. Gbadebo. Good morning. Good to have you. We, we are talking about the death of um, uh, Abba Kiari and how that relates to leadership. Uh, first of all, how did you react? And, and what do you, are there lessons that we should learn as a nation with the death of Abba Kiari? Uh, I learned about the news late in the night, and um, it was quite disturbing because, incidentally, at about uh, maybe 4 or 5 p.m., my wife and I, you know, my wife is very interested in history, and so. Uh, the issue came up that, wait a minute, this man's been gone for a long time and no news about him. Um, you know, so it, it's like, is he really okay or is he still in this country? And so it really shocked me when at about 1 p.m., 1 p uh, I just saw the news flash. And of course, one had to really run through uh, various channels to be sure that it wasn't what typical hawks. Um, and... Um, I don't know. I don't know. It really, it really hit me. Hit me because, uh, for me, when you talk about death, it's not about. I'm not really worried about the fact that someone has died. I'm more particular about the, you know, how they will answer that question. You know, that almighty question when they stand before their their maker, which is, how did you, you know, or what did you do with your life? Um. Very important because you see, power is not given by God. The same thing like wealth, just for you to flaunt it, or for you to uh, you know to show that you have it. It is His way of transferring um, wealth and opportunities to the downtrodden. And some people, uh, yes, they may help their immediate family or people in their neighborhood. But once you get into national office, then your responsibility, your immediate clerk goes beyond your, your village or community or something. It goes to every little corner of the community. That's why you find sometimes that the president of a country will even, like, with all the, you know, the problems they have in Europe and America, you saw the European Union still thought about giving us some money to help us cope. And China is sending medications and all kinds of help around and all that. So, you know, that really is my worry. You know, how would the man, the man who died, how would he answer that question? Mm. And away from, I mean, like you said, that will be a question to be answered, but, um, do you also think that we have a culture of secrecy in our governance that is not so helpful? Why do we not seem to uh, be informed of the activities that is going on? Is that a problem? Is there a way to manage that rightly, in your opinion? Um, well, you see, the system has continued to get away with treating the citizenry as if they don't matter. And 
even though we say we're practicing uh, democracy, of a government of the people, by the people, and so on, it is very sad that when these people get into the system, they get there. You see, our system is, um, is bad, bad in the sense that you keep changing, we change president, we change governor, and sometimes we change chief executives. But the real engine room of the country, the civil service, do we do anything there? And these are the people who, when you come with your lofty intentions and plans, who quickly corner you and tell you how much you could make for yourself, and how the other person builds the palace in his village, how the other man builds his uh, whatever in, Abu, in, in uh, you know, Mina, and so on. So you can see that, I mean, you know, Babangida built his own castle on a hill in Mina, and within the short tenure that Absalom Ab was there, he also built his own castle, and so on and so forth. He's like, what is wrong with these people, you know? They don't learn. And they're not learning from history, you know? They're not even learning from the fact that they are fast approaching, you know, their expiry dates. Because when you say a country has a life expectancy rate of, let's say, in the, in the, in the early 50s, and you have managed to live to 65, 70, and so on, and you are still thinking of accumulating for yourself. Honestly, like one of our professors in the Union like said years ago, um, you need to be taken for psychiatric uh, test or something. So there, it, it is a problem. The whole structure needs to, uh, you know, to be revamped vigorously. Because I'll tell you, even if you, if you go into, if you go into Asu Rock, if you go into the presidency, if you go into, there are certain people who look as if they are the force. You remember the German, the the former, um, <laughs> you know, head of service, who could boldly look at the camera and said, "Who is the government?" Right. Meaning. You are standing before me. You are standing before government. You are telling me that government has removed you. <laughs> um, there, there is, there is also some kind of opium or whatever that they sniff when they get in the corridors of power. Uh, and when you have a leader who, um, I, I think, prefers to lead from the rear, you know, there are different types of leaders. You know, the one that leads from the front, from the side, from the rear. When you have a leader that chooses to lead from the rear. Some sorrow get quickly moves in and honestly shuts everybody out. During Abacha's time, it was de facto al-Mustafa, even though Jeremiah Husseini was playing something on the side, but the de facto ruler was al-Mustafa. And so this is the problem that we need to figure out and, and we need to constantly talk about. And when Mr. President raised that issue of his ministers reporting to uh, you know, to have a carry. Did anybody complain? Sorry, yeah, I have to move right. on to uh, uh, Dele Momodu. Thank you so very much. I understand that Dele Momodu is still on the line. Very quickly, sir, if you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, obviously, there is now a political vacancy, to, so to speak, with the passing on of Abba Kiari. What should we expect in the coming days? Uh, well, I'm sure uh, it will be month, maybe over a period of time, maybe in the next one week. Uh, and I'm also sure the president would have to appoint someone else uh, as chief of staff. Who that will be, I don't know. But there are speculations which, for now, nobody can confirm that the other man who was in the background, Ali Haji Babagana Kingi Bay, uh, may be positioned for that role. All right, I think we're going to say uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dele Momodu, and of course, uh, Femi Gbadebo, for your thoughts and joining us here this morning. 
Thank you. Have a nice day.